Thank you very much. Senator Cortez Masto. Thank you. I, I want to thank Chairman and Ranking Member for holding this hearing on several important pieces of legislation that have a positive impact on, on Indian country. I also thank them for pulling up uh, uh, the IHS Workforce Parity Act. It is a piece of legislation that Senator Mole and I have worked on together uh, after talking with our tribes and understanding that too many tribal members can't access the health care they need because of a dire doctor shortage in Indian country. So we need to make it easier, as we've heard today from our incredible panelists. That's why this legislation um, would allow healthcare providers working part-time to access IHS scholarship and loan repayment programs. And you've heard why this is so important. And so let me start with uh, Ms. Wilson. Angie, thank you again for participating uh, virtually here. Thank you for explaining really the workforce shortages in Indian country, what you're actually seeing on the ground and the impact it is having to so many uh, members of our tribal community. But can you also talk about, particularly in our rural health care areas, quite often because there's a limited amount of health care workers, when we do get them in Indian country or rural areas, they are actually uh, ha wearing different hats. They don't just wear one hat, right? There, there's different things that they are doing because um, it, that flexibility uh, is important. And um, whether it's full-time or part-time, uh, the clinical hour requirements uh, really increase staff time for our, for our capacity. So why is this bill that important? And Angie, let me start with you. And, and please address the flexibility piece of it. Uh, and, and the many hats that somebody, in, even working part-time, will, will have that benefits Indian country. Well, I think that, you know, here, especially in our state, we're um, primarily a rural state, and uh, access to health care providers is somewhat, you know, challenging for us. And I would say, especially when we look at things like behavioral health, uh, there have been often times where we get one psychiatrist that one tribe may find that, all of us see if we can do a contract with that person, even for just one day or, or, you know, just to meet the need in our tribal clinics. And so it's a di it's somewhat in a, in a dire situation. And when people wear multiple hats, uh, you know, it diminishes the amount of time that we really get with our patients. And I think that when we look at the health disparities of American Indians and Alaska natives, there's really no time for that. We need help on the ground. You know, we have more t uh, infant mortality rates that are, off the charts compared to non-Hispanic whites, you know, mothers who have almost three times uh, less likely to receive uh, late or no prenatal care. Um, we don't have access to some of the urgent care needs that we have in our communities. So by being able to pass a bill that would allow the flexibility of onboarding part-timers uh, and giving them, extending them benefits for loan repayment, it really helps us in our clinics to be able to strategize access to care in a more um, uh, convenient way for our patients and be able to allow us to schedule them appropriately to be able to utilize their skills for what we need them there for. Thank you. And let me jump to the Assistant Secretary, uh, Ms. Egeron. Egeron. Is that right? It's Igorin. Igorin. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, uh, Ms. Igorin, uh, thank you for the support uh, of the this piece of legislation, the Workforce Parity Act. Can you talk a little bit about how it would help build the workforce pipeline in Indian country? Yes. Thank you for that question, Senator. And I want to thank um, Ms. Smith. She actually met with the secretary when he was out in the district and talked about these issues and the need for um, support and increased capacity in our tribal um, health care. So this bill would allow the flexibility you were just talking about, whether that's being able to recruit health care providers who want to serve tribal communities, but also have family or ob other obligations to be able to split their time, or for true rural communities that may not have full capacity, may not need somebody 40 hours a week, to be able to utilize their clinical time as well as administrative time or other time to serve that community. So it builds capacity. It also, we've seen, builds the ability to recruit people and retain people, which is of critical need. Right. Um, yeah. Thank you. I thank you to all the panelists. Thank you for uh, every one of you. Uh, it, 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 the advocacy and what we hear from you uh, is so important as we look to passing this legislation and doing right by Indian country. So thank you. Senator Smith. 
<clears throat> Thank you so much, Chair Schatz. Um, President Larson, welcome again. I'm so glad to be with you. Um, could you just explain to us, um, you think about these IRA corporate charters, I think it's sometimes it's hard for people to understand the real world, imp real world implications for what these charters mean and how they end up constraining uh, the lower suit. Could you just tell us a little bit more, like how does it make life more difficult exactly? Well, thank you, Senator Smith. And I apologize, I forgot to thank you personally for championing this with- You did it earlier this morning, so it's okay. So thank you. <laughs> Um, the charter was not written with sovereignty in mind, right. tribal sovereignty. It's actually an impediment to tribal sovereignty. Mm -hmm. The language that's restrictive and paternalistic, such as the contracts cannot be made for more than three years at a time. If we want to borrow money over $1,000, we have to get uh, approval from the federal, federal government. So when we go to banks, mm -hmm. they don't want to deal with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't want to work with us looking at that as a possibility. And also it has potential for exorbitant and egregious legal fees. Mm -hmm. So revoking the charter is to us a step towards self-governance. It's, it seems it, even though you sort of put it to the side, you don't, you're not required to use it, it still constrains, for example, how banks might think about what you're, you know, what you're working on. And Correct. of course, symbolically, it is um, a, a, a sign of that. As, you know, we both use the word paternalistic in our discussion of it. So um, you know, I'm thinking about, there's so many great things that you all are doing. I'm, as you know, I'm very interested in the work that you're doing around building um, houses made out of hemp. And I wonder if you just might share a little bit about that project and you know, in mind like how this revocation of the, of the corporate charter would help <coughs> you to do that work more efficiently and effectively. Certainly. Uh, Senator, I thank you for bringing up that effort, uh, the effort that we have to bring our citizens a safer, healthier, and more energy efficient home that could potentially last for generations. Mm -hmm. All the while, it cleans the carbon out of the air. And while it's standing and lasting for generations, as I said, it continues to clean the carbon out of the air. We are currently building a hemp campus, which will house our processing equipment. Getting funding for that, people did look at that possibility. They said, well, what about this? We had to take more time to explain that the governance that we have does not use the corporate charter, mm -hmm. but it's in people's minds. So if we could get rid of that, I think it would speed up the process right. for the things that we're trying to do in the future. Right. Thank you so much. You know, I want to just take the opportunity, uh, Chief Langford, while we have both of you on the panel, um, uh, I'm wondering if you would just tell us a little bit about how uh, the work that you all did with the revocation of your corporate charter and what that's meant for the Miami tribe. Senator, I, I have to take a moment and thank you for your efforts to help this nation, as I want to thank uh, Senator Mullins, then Congressman Mullins, for his help. Uh, yes, everything he's saying, it's, it's, it's really hard for tribes at times. Uh, we have enough trouble with banks, uh, being a sovereign nation, and uh, we actually lost a bank. You know, they, they got in there, they saw the corporate charter and was like, what's this? And they just mm -hmm. panicked. Mm -hmm. And so it's a real hindrance. It's an archaic thing. And I, I just have to thank you for helping tribes to remove that <coughs> impediment that should never have been there in the first place. So mission anyway. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Um, I just have one question um, for the Assistant Secretary. Um, uh, Secretary, Igor, and it's no secret that uh, getting providers to serve in Indian country in Alaska, particularly in uh, rural areas, is a tremendous challenge. So I support giving more flexibility to IHS to recruit and retain providers. What is HHS and HRSA doing to improve provider recruitment and retention in Native Hawaiian health care systems which face uh, similar challenges? Thank you, Senator, for being able to talk about 
the work that Hearst is, does to oversee the Native Hawaiian Health Scholarship Program, which provides scholarships for 300 Hawaiians in primary and, and behavioral health disciplines. So it's working to expand the health workforce for Native Hawaiians. Um, and those who have served, the majority continue to serve, at once they go through this training, continue to serve medically high need areas in the populations within Hawaii. So it is shows that the investments in having people serve in communities have people stay in communities. Thanks very much. And could the tools proposed in S3022 be applicable to the Native Hawaiian healthcare systems? Congressman, if it's okay with you, I want to go back Senator, and talk. Yeah. Senator, I'm sorry. This is, I was a house mouse for a very long time. I lost my house race. So. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm, I apologize. No, it's years, fine. Of, years of trading. Um, Senator, I, I would actually like to make sure that I go back to HRSA and get the, the correct information and have the, a technical conversation with your staff. Okay, thank you very much. Um, if there are no more questions uh, for our witnesses, uh, members may also submit follow up questions. Uh, for the record. The hearing record will be open for two weeks and I want to thank all of the witnesses for their time and their testimony. I know how hard it is to get to Washington um, and I really appreciate um, all of these tribal leaders and also administration officials uh, for, for making the journey and also uh, uh, the um, testifier online as well. So uh, this hearing is adjourned.